SCP-511, Object Class, Euclid. Instances of SCP-511 typically occur within residential structures with a block or stone foundation that includes a basement or crawl space. All attempts to remove an instance of SCP-511 from such a residence have proved ineffective. SCP-511 is always found associated with a colony of feral Felis domesticus, common domestic cats. Members of this colony are designated SCP-511-1. SCP-511 is a mass of biological matter taking the form of a large feline, often with extra limbs, eyes, mouths, or other organs. It is typically coated with dirt, blood, and fecal matter, making its fur appear black despite its actual coloring. Tests have shown SCP-511's fur to actually be a random patchwork of various feline coat patterns, colors, and lengths. SCP-511's mass varies from 10 kilograms to over 50 kilograms, roughly in proportion to the number of SCP-511-1 in the associated colony. The tissue that makes up this mass consists primarily of the bodies of deceased SCP-511-1. The portion of SCP-511 that does not comprise SCP-511-1 consists of other biomass, small rodents, various plant materials, insects and insect larvae, black mold, a human... Incorporation of dead tissue into SCP-511 does not appear to slow the normal process of decay. Different areas of SCP-511 undergo different stages of biodegradation at any given time. Some areas show little more than lividity, while other areas may show active carrion insect infestation, and some areas may even show li liquefaction of s tissues. Note, researchers have described SCP-511 making a purring sound. Tests have shown this sound does not originate with SCP-511, but it is actually the sound of insects, most often blowflies, trapped within its mass. Dr. A. SCP-511 prefers to inhabit dark spaces with a relatively high humidity, such as old basements and crawl spaces. It will continually scavenge its immediate area for new biomass to incorporate into itself, displacing and expelling matter that has decayed past mechanical usefulness. Examples of SCP-511-1 resemble ordinary Felis domesticus that have undergone extreme neglect. They display a body condition score of 2 or 1, regardless of the amount of food available. Ulcerated skin is common, as are parasitic infestations, tumors, and various viral and bacterial infections. SCP-511-1 are known carriers of a particularly virulent strain of... A typical SCP-511-1 shows no interest in grooming itself and has patchy and matted fur. It is unclear to what extent the physical condition of an SCP-511-1 is a result of the influence of SCP-511, and to what extent it is due to suboptimal living conditions. Several observations have been made of an SCP-511-1 retrieving biomass from elsewhere and bringing it to SCP-511 to be incorporated. Addendum 1 Incident report of containment breach at site 511 dash. Incident 1 dash 511 dash 11. Document number 1 dash 511 dash 11. Personnel involved D7856, male subject 35 years of age. Date August 27th, 19. Location, Site 511- Evergreen Way, California. Description, after determining that a permanent human presence at an SCP-511 site results in moderation of aggression in SCP-511-1, 
Containment protocols updated to require Class D personnel reside on site in the event the original homeowner is deceased. Six months after this policy is established, D-7856 is assigned to Site 511- As expected, within a week, aggression levels of SCP-511-1 toward Foundation personnel lessen considerably. 16 days after being assigned to Site 511-D-7856 begins showing signs of increased aggression, verbally abusing Foundation personnel and engaging in superficial vandalism of Site 511-D-7856 is reprimanded. 18 days into his assignment, D-7856 interferes with the Foundation team by throwing garbage and yelling obscenities. D-7856 is subdued with a tranquilizer dart and locked in his quarters. At 20 days, D-7856 begins capturing SCP-511-1 and is only discovered when a Foundation research team enters for routine specimen collection 48 hours later. The team discovers remains from 37 separate SCP-511-1 collected in the kitchen. Bodies are dismembered and show signs of... D-7856's body is discovered in the basement after an apparent attempt to... Site 511- is incinerated as an emergency containment procedure. Okay. I think there's something to the crazy cat lady idea. I think we need to be more careful with the class D's on this one. Dr. A. Special containment procedures. When an instance of SCP-511 is identified, the affected resident shall be quarantined and will receive the next sequential site designation. Excepting one main entrance, sites hosting SCP-511 will have all points of possible entry or exit permanently sealed with appropriate building materials. The main entrance will remain locked at all times. Entry is permitted to Foundation personnel with written authorization from Level 3 or higher. All SCP-511 sites will be equipped with remote monitoring equipment allowing for 24-hour surveillance and a continual tracking of the numbers of SCP-511-1 inhabiting the site. At all times, one Class D personnel will be resident in the site. Personnel with this assignment are exempted from monthly termination for the duration of assignment. Candidates for this assignment shall be exclusively drawn from a population of post-menopausal women with a global clinical dementia rating of 2 or greater. Note, due to the exclusive nature of this population, O5 has approved recruiting from local hospice and or nursing homes if necessary. The population of SCP-511-1 within a site must remain within an optimal range of 52 individuals. Below this range, adult Felis domesticus should be introduced to the site to increase population to minimum levels. If population exceeds individuals, it must be culled immediately. Any SCP-511-1 found outside the containment site shall be euthanized and the remains incinerated. Any biological material leaving the containment site for testing will be handled in accordance with standard protocols for a level 4 biohazard. All specimens are incinerated after testing is complete. Before coming in contact with any material from the containment site, personnel must be inoculated for influenza, hepatitis A, hepatitis B, tetanus, tick-borne encephalitis, and full medical workups are mandatory on a bi-weekly basis for personnel working with SCP-511.